Hey guys, it's Gareth Austin, it's Pew Pew Pew, and uh, welcome back to Season 7 of the GPC. Uh, this is Week 3 against Trev. I do apologise for a lack of video last week. Unfortunately, we had to battle late due to me being away on the weekend, and I just don't like getting battle videos up late. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just take that one on the chin. Uh, it was a 3-hour win to me against Dom. I did get a bit lucky, uh, I crit his Zuma with a knockoff from Weavile, which put it in range of P-Jab. So overall it wasn't a great game anyway. Uh, you know, it wasn't particularly well played by either of us really, and I did get a bit lucky, which was unfortunate. But anyway, this week we're up against Trev, Trev CL, the boy. Um, um, yeah, uh, overall, matchup wise, uh, it's sort of a split. Uh, I have a few things uh, that wall his main offense, but also I don't have too much to pressure his team. Uh, as an example, I have probably the best wall step of Coco in the game in Steelix. Unfortunately, it is the Z Crystal, which means it does get kind of a Lola, which I did forget about during the match. Um, Mew, of course, can do pretty much anything, but again, you know, it's not going to punch massive holes through team. Mega Houndoom can be a problem, but I do have the Blastoise, of course, and as well as uh, Zapdos, which can mull it to an extent. Uh, Keldeo was kind of a problem while thinking about it, but I did end up uh, just uh, taking Blastoise as a, as a good way to deal with it. Excadrill, non-factor really. Um, my... Steelix pretty much deals with it, my Zap does pretty much deals with it, my Hippowdon, should I choose to bring it, deals with it, so, you know, if he did choose to bring it, it could be a Scarf set maybe, but it's not going to do too much. Mandibuzz uh, is probably his best way to wall Alakazam, Alakazam does a lot to his team, it's the only thing really on my team that does a lot to his team, so that would be my main uh, way of dealing with it. Uh, uh, that's where that would be his main way of dealing with it. Miss Major is probably not going to come. Milk Tank is probably his best way to deal with Weavile, so I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't come. Haxorus does a lot to my team if Steelix goes down, uh, and uh, if he's banded, that is, uh, because Blastoise is quite a reliable switch, and uh, if it's DD or something, you'll see my set in a minute. Uh, Garbodor might come for Hazard Stack, although I do have the Zapdos, and I do have uh, the Avalog and. Blastoise, sorry for removal. I knew I had in the spinner in there somewhere. Uh, and Go Go, it's probably not going to come, but it's quite a cool pick anyway. So, yeah, my, my plan for this game was uh, just trying to all out what he had offensively. Pulse switch out with Zapdos if I'm in on the Mega Hound Doom or something. Get a free switch into a Mega Alakazam and just kill something. Uh, that was going to be my main plan. Weavile can also pressure quite a bit if uh, his mill tank is weakened and I can set up an SD. But you'll see those sets in a minute. I do have a team miller this time around because uh, it, the things didn't reset. So uh, at least there's that. So yeah, we'll just hop into the team builder. Alright, so this is the team builder as you can see. I do apologise for the audio quality in the previous segment of the video. I realised when uh, putting it all together in the... Uh, on the project thing when I started recording this segment that it was with the wrong microphone so uh, I don't really have time to redo it I'm quite pressed for time it is Sunday today and I need to get this video up so yeah I'm not gonna be able to change that I do apologize uh, let's just get on with it we've got Steelix with a sugar berry uh, this is probably the best stop to most things on his team uh, he doesn't really have much that can break it outside of the Mega Houndoom um, this with the Chuckleberry completely walls uh, Haxorus, if it is a DD or SD setup, I just roar it out, no problem. If not, then I can start wearing it down with Earthquakes. Um, it also completely walls, um, I forget its name, Tapu Koko, uh, although it does get Nature's Madness, I believe it's called, the move that it gets to where it has your HP. That's the only way it can hit me, really, but it doesn't want to stay in on this because I can just Earthquake kill it. Uh, Stealth Rock is going to be quite important for me this game, so, uh, you know, just getting that pressure on him would be nice. Um, yeah, that's kind of the plan with the steel. It's wall everything, job done. Uh, this is probably my best check to uh, uh, Mega Houndoom, outside of maybe um, maybe my Curem to an extent. But uh, I kind of needed this to be physically defensive, uh, partly for the um, uh, Excadrill if it did come. Uh, but also for other things like potentially a physically offensive me, which could otherwise pressure my team if uh, Steelix gets damaged. It's just there as like a backup check to a lot of the things that Steelix would deal with, like um, 
you know, like maybe his hacks are a second toxicate and stuff like that. Uh, overall defense just felt better, mainly because even Spadef, I believe, I got to it KO by Modest Fire Blaster. If he is jolly, I can take two Dark Pulses. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the plan with this. Volt Switch is good for momentum, of course. Heat Wave was there, uh, in part for the Excadrill and something else, I forget what it was. Um, but yeah, it, that's that's that. Roost and Toxic, just stuff to wear stuff down with. Uh, here is the boy, uh, Blessed Ways. Uh, I initially was running um, Miracle on this for Keldeo, decided to switch it up instead for Counter, mainly because uh, it, Keldeo I can sort of deal with with Zapdos and uh, potentially switch into Cure because I'm expecting him to be Scarfed this game, mainly because it outspeeds uh, Megazam, which is very important, uh, and also can catch the Weavile off guard. So yeah, I'm expecting Scarf, I can kind of deal with it with other things by switching around. Uh, but yeah, this is mainly to deal with Haxorus. Uh, all the spreads so far, 248252, it just felt... Uh, it didn't feel necessary to do all the calcs, especially when it didn't really line up. A lot of the things are just... they're not necessarily resists, they're more just a matter of uh, of uh, switching in. It's, it's kind of a hard matchup for me, in the sense that my switching isn't the best, but then again, I do have the Megazam. Uh, so yeah, counter was there because... Uh, he only has a small chance of uh, killing me with Outrages, if he's uh, Adamant Scarf or Adamant plus one uh, speed through whatever means it could be. Uh, also if I switch in and he goes to the DD, I can just counter on anything that it goes for. It could be literally anything and I can take it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why it's there. Haze is just in case he starts setting up Calm Mines with his Caldeo on me. Uh, although, I, again, I'm not expecting that set, but you know, you can, you can never be too careful. Um, so yeah, that's the, the whole plan of this set, is just to catch it off guard, similarly to what I did w last week against Dom's uh, Mega... I've forgotten the name now, Mega Mega Cham, I hit the counter and killed it, so... It's a reliable strategy, if you get it off at the right time, and hopefully I can pull it off this game. Um, then we have Choice Scarf Curum, it pressures quite a bit on his team. Uh, Dragon Pulse is just strong to just press the button if his Tapu Koko is down. Uh, if not, I've got Earth Power for it, and I've got Ice Beam just for good pressure on his team. Shadow Ball is mainly there for the Mew in case he brings this Pedef Mew. Uh, it does about 40%, and if I get the drop, I can kill it on the second Shadow Ball. Uh, modest for main damage. This speed is just to outspeed max speed Coco, mainly because out of the things on his team that's going to get speed boosts, whether it be Scarf or DDs, it's, they outspeed me anyway, so there's no point in investing more into speed. May as well. Get that little bit of bulk, especially because it is quite a bulky mon with that with those base stats. So that's the whole plan. Just uh, spam Dark Pulse, uh, Dragon Pulse, really. Then we have a Focus Dash Weavile, mainly because I expect a lot of his thing, uh, either a Scarfer or something on his team, to be running speed gain in some to some measure. So having the the Focus Dash is very useful, especially when you consider I can set up an SD on, say, a banded. Uh, Haxorus then start just punching holes through his team. So yeah, it's it's quite a probably the most reliable item I could have run. I didn't want to run Life Orb and I didn't want to run stuff like Expert Belt as it wouldn't have really helped me in this situation. I need the Ice Shard just in case he does get set up with his Haxorus and it's below a certain threshold. I can't remember how much it does. Uh, Icicle Crash, of course, for a reliable stab and knockoff is just, you know, it's just knockoff. Uh, that speed, I believe, is to creep Caldeo, although I am not 100% sure. No, it can't be. It's to creep something. A base 110, I think that is. A 115. I forget what he's got on his... Oh, it's Mega Houndoom, that's it. I'm creeping Mega Houndoom. I don't know why, I've got nothing to hit it, but if I'm a plus 2, knockoff does a lot, so why not? And then finally, we have the boy, uh, Mega Zam, creeping... Uh, that's creeping a Coco. Uh, max special attack modest and I just click psychic and punch holes through his team. If he does have uh, Mandibuzz I have Dozen Gleam, if he does have uh, Mill Tank I have Focus Blast, if he has Mega Houndoom I have Focus Blast, if he has Mew I've got Shadow Ball, it basically just punches holes through his team. I kind of like the concept of having this mono team but it does allow for him to uh, uh, to bring in a scarf for free and revenge because it can't really stay in on anything. Uh, so if he does bring in, like a, I don't know, like a scarf Caldeo, uh, I can. But he and he has hydro pump. I kind of have to switch out. So yeah, that's 
It's easily revenge, but it does just kill pretty much everything on his team. So I feel like I'm doing the work with Megazam, and uh, yeah, that that'll be it for this part, and I'll see you in the battle. Alright, so this is the team that he decided to bring. Uh, as you can see, he does have the Mew, uh, which is probably his best way to deal with Megazam. Uh, he did decide to bring the Haxorus and the Keldeo, so I'm expecting one of the two to be Scar, probably Keldeo and this to be DD. Um, this will probably be a Z-Move user, uh, although I'm not too sure which one he'll run. Mega Houndu, of course, does quite a bit to this team, and Miltank will probably be Rocker defensive to deal with Weavile. So not too much in the way of defense. So if his team does get worn down and I've killed his Scarfer, then I can just basically sweep everything with Mega Zam. That's the plan. That's the plan stand. So uh, at this point, I'm not sure what he's going to lead with. He's probably going to lead with either Miltank or Coco. I feel kind of safe leading with Zapdos. Because if he does lead with Coco, I can just easily go straight out into my Steelix. No worries, no problem. So let's just hop into it. I'll stick this on slow. If I can... Yep, there we go. It's on slow. So as you can see, he leads Coco. I'm going to do exactly that. Go straight out into Steelix. I know I can take any one hit from this. Uh, even if he's Grass Knot, I don't believe it does too much. And then he reveals uh, the Guardian of Alola. Which I completely forgot was a move. And I take 75% of my HP. Uh, now this this next turn I stay in mainly because I expect him to Volt Switch, predicting me to go out and zap those on the Grass Knot, even though Grass Knot is at this point a roll to kill I believe, uh, but I do stay in and he does end up killing me off with the Grass Knot, and I basically lose my best switch into Coco and to Haxorus, so yeah I should have gone into zap those, which was kind of in my own head at that point, but uh, here I just kind of have to t tank the Volt Switch with this, I have no real choice, or Thunderbolt in this case, and I Volt Switch out. And I believe I go out into my Alakazam, uh, which does just kill from this range. It kills it from, I believe it's 94% or something like that. Something ridiculous. He has nothing that wants to switch into this Megazam. So, uh, here I just... Trace the Electric Surge, doesn't really matter. Uh, actually, I'll put it on normal because this is quite a bit too slow. And I kill it off with Psychic, as I said, that's the power of Modest Megazam. He goes out into his Haxorus here, and at this point I just think he's bluffing the Scarf but uh, I don't want to risk it, so I go out into um, into my Blastoise because I can take any two hits. He gets the highest possible roll in this Outrage. Don't do it! No! No, don't do it! Uh, which is quite unfortunate, and I'm up to 52%. He has a 19.3% to it KO, and as you saw, I do have the counter, and he gets the two highest two of the highest possible rolls, so I lose my Blastoise. No! 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 This is really crucial, you'll see later on in the game how much this mattered, uh, but what that does show me is that he's adamant, so he's probably DD or Scarf, so he's definitely not a dance set, but that's just really frustrating. At least if I'd have lived there and killed that off with a counter, I was in a much better position to deal with this team. Um, here I have to go into Weavile, I have no real choice. The fact that he switches out there tells me that he's probably not Scarfed. Though I can't, you know, you can never be sure. Uh, and he goes out into his Miltank, which I did predict, of course, and go for the knockoff. I knock off his Choppleberry, which is probably for a low kick from this. And I just decide to switch out into my Zapdos, try and get a Roost off ASAP. As he does just set up the rocks, which is quite unfortunate because it breaks my Sash on Weavile. Uh, just going to roost up, get to some healthy HP as he goes for the Toxic here. I believe I'd Toxic him. Uh, I know, I Volt Switch out, expecting him to predict Toxic or something for me. Uh, as he just goes for the Milk Drink, I believe, which means I go freely into my Curum. Uh, and I believe I just go for a Dragon Pulse here. Just trying to ju just judge the damage, see how much I do, and I don't do enough really. Uh, so he gets a free return off, doesn't do too much because of that bulk that I've got on this set. Go for another one in case he predicts the switch and doesn't go for Milk Drink, but he does. And here I go through the out Zapdos, expecting him to Milk Drink once again, just so I can get a Toxic off. Uh, there you go. I was just skip that turn because it was just going to be a lot of nothing happening. Um, here I expect him to expect me to Roost and go out into like his Mew or something and just Volt Switch, which was definitely the play because he does go out into Houndoom, which catches him off guard. I get the crit, which is quite useful because I believe it puts him in range of. Uh, doesn't gleam from Mega Alakazam in case you just switch out. But I do go out into this. He goes for the Sucker Punch, I believe, which doesn't kill because of the bulk investment, so that's paying off. I just get the Dragon Pulse off. 
Now here he has a couple of options, he can go into his mill tank or he can go into a potential Scarfer. He does reveal Scarf Caldeo, which I did expect. And at this point I don't really have a great switch in, outside of Mergalakazam, which can definitely take a Scald. Uh, so I've got not too much of a worry, I take this pretty easily because it's decent special defense and I kill it off of the Psychic. So here I'm feeling pretty confident, I've taken out most of his team. And he goes onto this Haxorus and I'm like, he's bluffing the Scarf again, he's not going to run dual Scarfers, and oh, uh, he is. No! 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 No, don't do it! So, uh, if I did not get the absolute maximum rolls on the Blastoise and this was dead, I pretty much cleaned up with Mergrelikazam and, Ke and uh, Weavile against these two. So yeah, that's quite unfortunate, but... You know what, I'll take it. I guess maybe not the Mew, I'll have to see what his set was, but here I go out into this. Uh, Ice Shard doesn't kill, so I'm just kind of hoping that I can maybe live a Dragon Claw through some magical means, but obviously I don't. No! No, don't do it! Because it's a Weavile. And uh, yeah, that's that's the game. Don't do it! I'm a virgin! So the rolls on Blastoise were unfortunate. Uh, but I should have played sm more smart around my Steelix. Um, I definitely needed that a bit later on in the game. Um, so yeah, quite unfortunate. I could have maybe, at the very least, brought it down to a 1-0. Maybe even won that game if the rolls did go my way. But you can never, you can never play for rolls really. Well played to Trev. Uh, a good prep as well on the on the double scarf as I wasn't expecting it at all. Once I seen the Caldeo was scarfed, I just auto piloted to the fact that this was Dragon Dance, which is why I stayed in with my Mega Algazam, but yeah, again, well played. Not really too much I can say about it. It was rather fast paced, rather you know, not not a fantastic game, but it was uh, a game that did require quite a lot of careful thinking and obviously on my side didn't really pay out, but you know what, you win some, you lose some, that puts me currently at 1-2-2, uh, two minus two, I believe. I'm not sure where I am in the standings, I haven't checked this week. Uh, I just bobbed my stuff on the sheet and then left it at that. Uh, next week I play Turbo, we're already pretty much set on battling as soon as possible, so hopefully the video next week will be a better quality. Uh, I'll probably have more time to edit, although I probably will edit this one a bit. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.